I'm so glad I'm finished earlier than expected. Now I can get home to Mary. When I got home, I found something in our entrance. I'm home! Who do these shoes belong to? There were men's shoes in our entrance. My name's Aaron. My girlfriend Mary and I work together at the same company. We've been together for a while, so recently I've been thinking of popping the big question to her. Mary! Please marry me! Wow! Of course, yes! I proposed to her under a beautiful night sky. And luckily, she said yes! I was bursting with delight! So we started organizing things for our wedding. We decided on the perfect venue. Also, Mary's dress for the wedding. And it truly seemed as though nothing could go wrong! The day before the wedding came around, I was originally going to rest at home, but I had to go to the office to finish off some urgent work. Sorry, I just got asked to come in, but I'll be back soon! Sure, good luck with work! <sighs> I really wish my manager Kevin wouldn't give me tasks to do on the day before my wedding! Well, if you get through today, we can enjoy our amazing wedding tomorrow. Off you go! So, just like that, I was on my way to work. Apparently, the task at hand might take me until the night to finish. Aaron, I thought you had the day off today! Hello, boss! I got called in to help with a few things. You're getting married tomorrow, right? Don't tie yourself out too much! Thank you, sir. But I'll still do my best. Our company boss is a really good person. He's always been so kind to me, even though I'm a lower-level employee compared to him. Sometimes he calls me out of nowhere, and we just talk. Sometimes we even eat lunch together. I wanted to complete my work fast, seeing as tomorrow was my big day. And thankfully, I was able to somehow finish by the evening. I'm so glad I finished earlier than expected. Now I can go home to Mary. When I got home, I found something in our entrance. I'm home! Who do these shoes belong to? There were men's shoes in our entrance. And they weren't mine! Mary, her feet couldn't have grown in this short amount of time, right? There's no way! I was getting a bad feeling about the shoes, so I quietly made my way further into our house. No one was in the living room, nor in the kitchen, or in Mary's room. Why are there voices coming from the bathroom? My dear Mary, how dare you marry that loser Aaron? Well, what else am I supposed to do? You're married, Kevin, after all. That's my bad, Mary. But no matter if we're both married or not, my love for you will never change! Oh, sweet Kevin. You know exactly what to say. Yay! I love you, my dear Mary! You have got to be kidding me! As it turns out, Kevin was having a bath with my soon-to-be wife, Mary! He's the one who made me work today, even though I originally had a day off! Could it be that he made me work today? just to get married to himself? Lather up, my sweetie. Make me more bubbles, Mary! I can't believe those two! And it seems as though Kevin's into some kind of baby play. Oh! I felt like I was about to pass out. But instead, I decided to buy more time for myself by locking them into the bathroom. I couldn't lock them in with a key, so I put a lot of heavy boxes outside the door. We were planning on moving out of here after we got married, so luckily I had a lot of heavy boxes lying around. With the boxes outside the door, they shouldn't be able to get out now. Uh, someone's outside the bathroom. I'll go see if it's a robber. The robber is you, Manager Kevin! And Aaron! Uh, Aaron? I thought you were supposed to be at work. I finished and I rushed home to be with you! How long have you been seeing Kevin, Mary? Open the door, Aaron. I'll let you know about everything if you do so. That's right, Aaron. Open up and we'll all talk it through. I have nothing to talk to either of you about. You've both been caught red-handed. I saw everything with my own two eyes. Can't believe such a thing would happen to me the day before my wedding. This is horrible. Mary and Kevin wouldn't stop shouting from inside the bathroom. Unfortunately for them, I wasn't ready to forgive them just yet. There's no way they're getting away with what they've done. Trouble Busters! Leaving them in the bathroom, I first decided to contact my parents. After that, I also contacted Mary's parents. Mary's parents were always so kind to me. But it broke my heart to have to tell them what their daughter had done. But I had no other choice. 
Both sets of parents said they'd be right on their way. Last but not least, I contacted my boss. Hello, boss. My apologies for the sudden phone call. Oh, Eric, is something the matter? Well, the thing is, something has happened that affects both my private and work life. That sounds like a big deal. So tell me, exactly what happened? It really is a big deal. I have my hands full at the moment, but that's also why I contacted you, sir. Hmm. Seems as though you're really going through something serious. I'm free now, though. If you don't mind, I can be right over. Sir, thank you. My boss was so kind as to come to my place to help figure my situation out with me. He's such a respectable man. Nearly an hour went by, but I patiently waited for everyone to get here. Aaron, please, let us out of here! Aaron, we'll catch a cold if you leave us in here. Do whatever you have to to keep warm. Mary, I need to get out of here. Stop relying on her, you rat! After a while longer, my parents arrive. Mom, Dad, sorry for asking you both to come here so suddenly. It's fine. Where's Mary? She's in the bathroom with the guy she's been cheating on me with. That brat! How could she do such a thing the day before your wedding? Then Mary's parents also arrive. Aaron, my boy, I can't believe what my daughter has done to you. It truly is so shameful what she's done. Please don't cry, the both of you. Should we let them out of the bathroom soon? Now that both my parents and Mary's parents were here, I decided to free Mary and Kevin from the bathroom. Aaron, I can't believe you locked us in there. Uh, Mom, Dad. Who are these people? Who are you? Having a bath with our daughter? No, Mom, you see, uh, this isn't what it looks like at all. As if anyone would believe you. This man here has been traveling for a really long time, and he just so happened to come across our place, and he said that he wanted to have a bath, so I let him do so. Maybe you spent too long in hot water that your mind's gone to mush. It doesn't matter what you say. There's no denying that that man right there is our manager from work, Kevin! Uh, Aaron! We really weren't having a bath together! I just got stuck in a drain outside and she was helping me clean up! I can't believe your brain's also gone to mush! Shame on you! I saw you doing your weird baby play thing in the tub! Mary and Kevin were doing their best to explain themselves to our parents. But it didn't matter what they said. At the end of the day, they were standing there covered in only a single bath towel. How embarrassing! Then, my boss finally showed up. Aaron, I'm here! Boss! Thank you for coming all the way. No worries. Let me help you out the best I can. You're, You're too kind, sir. Thank you. As you can see, my boss is super friendly, but he's also one of the best businessmen I've ever come across. When he's in the zone, he knows exactly what he's doing. Kevin, how dare you sneakily see Mary, even though you knew she was getting married? No, you see, it really isn't what it looks like. So tell me, how exactly is it that you and Mary ended up having a bat together if you both weren't involved in an affair? Uh, I'm sorry! You too, Mary. Why did you ever think it'd be okay to see Kevin on the side, even though you were to get married soon? Sorry. Just saying sorry isn't gonna cut it. You shouldn't even be apologizing to me. It's Aaron you should be asking for forgiveness from. Uh, Aaron, I'm really sorry. My boss really is an amazing guy. After everything my boss grilled them with, they finally spilled everything. Turns out they've been seeing each other for a while now. And the whole time that Mary and I were together, they had been secretly seeing each other. I can't believe this is happening to me. No, I can't believe I got involved with this witch of a woman. Mary, I truly believe that you would make a great daughter-in-law. We had so much hope for you. Ever since the first time Aaron introduced you to us, we adored you. I'm sorry. Do you have any idea just how much you've embarrassed everyone here today? You really need some common sense in you. Aaron, please do with her whatever you feel necessary. Uh, I'm okay, thank you. I'm not sure exactly what you're implying, but violence is never the answer, ever. Aaron, you've done well. As for you, Kevin and Mary, you both better understand just how embarrassing and horrible your actions have been. 
I understand, sir. I'm really sorry. Just like that, the two of them were scolded by those around them. It must have been so embarrassing for them to just be standing there, covering up with nothing but towels. But there's no time for sympathy here. There was still the big question of whether to go on with the wedding tomorrow. Mary, there's no way that we can get married like this. Let's call off the wedding tomorrow. No! Please, it was all just a silly mistake on my part. You already confessed that this has been going on for a long time now. That's no mistake. Mary, stop continuing to make a fool of yourself. Just accept that Aaron doesn't want to marry you anymore. Fine. We'll figure out the details with a lawyer later. Okay. Do you mind if I get changed into something a little more comfortable? Go do whatever you like and get out of my house while you're at it too. With this, finally the chaotic night at my house was over. A few days later, we worked on figuring everything out with a lawyer. Our wedding ceremony was successfully canceled, and the cancellation fee was all taken care of by Mary. I was also able to be compensated for damages because of what Mary had done. As for Kevin, our boss wasn't able to punish him in any way at work, considering that cheating is a private matter. But his wife inevitably found out about what happened, so they ended up getting divorced. The only one that was happy after all this went down was Mary. I'm going to get married to Kevin. He makes so much more money than you. So even if I have to pay for the cancellation of our wedding, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. That brat. She better get her head screwed on properly. I can even afford to quit my job after we get married. I'm going to become a full-time homemaker for Kevin. Ugh, stop rubbing it in. Mary couldn't get enough of imagining her stress-free life after having married Kevin. Unfortunately, however, straight after this, it turned out that Kevin has been stealing money from the company. And with the money he'd been stealing, he was buying expensive gifts for Mary. But the company found out what he'd done, and he was quickly arrested. And so Mary's dream life was also lost. I'm finally able to rest now that everything's over. That was when, out of nowhere, Mary contacted me. Aaron, I'm so sorry for everything that happened. I know it might be hard for you to forgive me, but I hope you'll be able to find it in your heart to do so. What do you want, Mary? I can't forget you, Aaron. I'm really sorry for everything. Please, can you give us another try? As if I ever could! Not after seeing you like that and finding out everything you've done to me so far. You're unbelievable! That was all just a really bad mistake on my part. You've always been more precious to me than Kevin. I can see that clearly now. I have no plans on forgiving you for what you've done. Goodbye! After I sent my final text to her, I blocked her number. After that, however, it seemed as though she still couldn't give up on me. And I'd find her lurking around outside her company building. Why do I feel like someone's watching me? Mary! Please, Aaron, don't leave me! Ah! You're scaring me! Just leave me alone! Because Mary wouldn't leave me alone, I had no choice but to call the police on her. And she was arrested for stalking. I never thought that these two would end up being arrested, ever. But I feel like, finally, my life could go back to being normal. One year after everything, I didn't think I'd ever be able to fall in love again after what had happened to me. But recently, I met an amazing woman. Her name's Heather, and we're now seeing each other with hopes of getting married in the near future. Erin, where do you want to go this weekend? We can go anywhere you like, Heather. Then let's go to a spa I've been interested in. Oh, sorry. I don't do too well with baths. Oh, really? Yeah. But actually, I'm sure anywhere with you will be fun. <laughs> You're funny, Aaron. <laughs> then it's decided. We'll check out the spa this weekend. I believe Heather is the one for me. And this time around, I think we'll be able to get our happy ending together. For now, I hope our dating days will be filled with bliss. Come on, everyone, eat up. What is this? I can't let my relatives eat this. Oh, uh, this is worse than sewage. I'm still shopping. Huh? Then this cooking. Who made it? I did. Gross! <laughs> I can't eat this. What is this, pig food? Sorry. 
Sorry is not enough. This is too far. You didn't have your mom teach you. Oh, yeah, you grew up in a single mother household, so she was too busy earning money, huh? <laughs> Guess they say poor people are too busy for everything, huh? Don't have any time to learn cooking. Loser. <laughs> no, that's not true. You don't have to pretend. You just can't survive with just one parent. I get it. One of my classmates had one parent, and he was horrible. You always talk about that kid. Yeah, so I went against marrying you, but... My late sweetheart thought it would be a good idea, and here we are now. <sighs> Why did Alan marry you, of all people? You told him not to marry this trash. <sighs> my brother is so stupid. Seriously, come on! You're of no use here, so go clean or something. Okay. I'm Hillary. I live with my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, whose husband is away for business. I also live with Susan, her third grade daughter. My father-in-law, who was a kind person, passed away three years ago. We used to live together with my husband, Alan, but... Alan had to go away for business for a month, so we were living with just us for a little bit. After Alan left, they started bullying me, and I really do not like this. Hillary, hey ya! I want to see you so bad! I want to see you too. Huh? Are you okay? Uh, I'm fine. Just healthy as usual. Kicking names and taking ass. I think you'd be kicking ass and taking names. Oh, sorry. I'm distracted from chips. You really love chips. Don't eat too much, huh? I know. Three bags per day, right? I'm keeping our promise. I'm such a great wife, huh? Ah, you're giving your promise, huh? Wait, hang on. I didn't make that promise with you. Three bags is too many. At least one bag. What? Is three too many? No, too many. I'll live in handcuffs then. I'll keep my promise with you. I think that's perfect. Can't eat chips even if you want it. Should I hold on to the key? Can I ask you to? You have to be in cuffs to not eat chips? <laughs> <sighs> But seriously, are you good? Huh? I I'm fine. What do you mean? Okay, you make sure to tell me if there's something going on. I'll go home right away. <laughs> Thank you. That's so kind. Man, I was pretending to be good, but he figured it out so quick. He sees right through me. But I don't want to bother him since he's busy overseas. I'm sure he'd really leave his work and come home. And I can't tell him for another reason, too. Just so you know, you better not tell Alan anything. Yes, ma'am. You know what's gonna happen if you do, right? I know. <laughs> what a loser single parent household, huh? You won't be able to pay for your parents' funeral fees. <laughs> Sucks to be poor. The reason I couldn't go against them, they paid for my mother's funeral fees. Yes, my household was poor. My father who passed had a lot of loans too. And so my mom and I both struggled to pay it off. That's why when my mother passed, I didn't have any money for the funeral. But my in-laws paid it off. And now they're saying that I need to pay it off. So, what are you paying me back? Can you wait a little more? I don't have any money at the moment. What? Why the hell not? You're always just at home. You're so free and you don't have any money. N no, I just need to do the chores. You should be doing the chores anyway. Do something else in addition. You don't have any money and you're useless as a wife. You're useless, seriously. S sorry Look, I'll wait till next month, so you better pay me back. Uh, okay. Oh, Susan has an open house later this week, so you go for me, huh? Also, I'm gonna go out on the weekend, so take good care of her. Okay. There's no way I can pay them back. I do all the chores after Alan left. I can't go work a part-time job. And I'm basically the only one looking after Susan. I don't mind that at all, but if anything... I'm home! Oh, hey, Susan. Welcome home. 
How are you, Hillary? I'm great. How was school? It was so much fun! That's wonderful. Oh, here! Huh? Chips? A gift! I know that you love these. Eat up! S susan I love you, sweetie! Let's eat together! S stop You're choking me! I'm happy, but don't you get in trouble for shopping on your way home? I'm fine. I'm good at that kind of thing. Let's avoid that, okay? The only nice thing here is Susan. I seriously haven't jumped out of a window yet thanks to her. She's in the third grade, but she's very mature. Sometimes I feel like she's even more mature than me. Oh, you're home? Welcome home. Hey, Mom. Don't talk to that thing too much. Why, Mom? She's only got one parent. In other words, poor. You're gonna catch a case of the poor if you talk to her. Uh-huh. Good girl. Come over here now. No. Huh? Then come to Grandma. Not to you two. What? The teacher at school said that you shouldn't have poor hearts. Your hearts are so incredibly poor. I'm gonna be with Hillary, who has a rich and full heart. What? what the hell? Don't be like that. Come over. You don't want to be with Mom? You're just gonna go somewhere without me again, right? I'd rather be with Hillary. D damn it. Hillary, let's go upstairs. Let's eat chips together. Where there are no poor people. Oh, okay. Hang on! I was eating chips with Susan, but listening to her talk about her school. It's been so long since I've eaten chips. They're so good! That night, after Susan went to sleep, I was called up by Alan's mom and his sister. Sit there now. Uh, okay. What did you do to brainwash her? Be honest. I didn't brainwash her. I know you did. She was kinder. If you didn't do something, she wouldn't have talked bad about me. I think it's because you're never around her. She can't be around you, so she's sad. How about you go to her open house? What? Look, I'm really busy unlike you. Who only has a single parent. You only do chores, but I've got a lot I want to do. Uh-huh. You're so annoying. You're just a single parent child and you think your opinion means anything? Aw, oh, about that thing. Huh? That thing? You've forgotten already? That thing about tomorrow. Huh? About tomorrow? I didn't hear anything about tomorrow. I told you really high-pitched like I was a mosquito. A mosquito? Oh yeah, I heard that too. My relatives are coming tomorrow, so you better make the food. Huh? Food? Yeah, it's been three years since my late husband passed, so everyone's coming by to pay their respects. So yeah, cook for us. I, I don't know if I can get it ready. But she already told you. I heard her say it too. Super high-pitched. You just forgot. How am I supposed to hear that high-pitched? How do you even say it that high-pitched? Pure willpower. Was she a mosquito in her past life or something? She's like a real the fly. I would never say that out loud. So yeah, cook. By the way, I've told my relatives that your cooking is amazing. So they're going to be looking forward to it. What? I told them that you had formal training at a restaurant. What? Why would you lie about that? I want to make sure they know you were a good person. Don't you dare embarrass me. Oh, and don't make food that tastes like leftovers. We're looking forward to it, Hillary. There's no getting out of this. Okay. If you embarrass me, I might just chase you out of the house. That's perfect. So you better work hard so it doesn't happen. Show us that even a single-parent household child can do good things sometimes. Ah, <sighs> Cooking. I'm sure no matter what I cook, they're gonna make fun of it. Tomorrow's gonna suck. The next day. Hey, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Oh, by the way. 
there's a chef and one of the relatives that are coming today. You better remember that she's going to be eating it. Work hard so you're not going to be laughed at. Yeah, they're going to laugh at us too if you screw up. You didn't have to tell me that. We're looking forward to it. Good luck. A few hours later, I was out shopping with Susan. I want you to buy me something. Okay, I'll buy it as a thank you for the other day. Thank you. You're the best. Gotta have snack buddies. <laughs> You're welcome. Huh? Is something the matter? Your phone is buzzing. Oh, it is. It's from Alan's mom. Hello? Is something the matter? Oh, we finally got through. We're all about to eat your food now. Huh? My food? Where are you? Whatever, we're gonna go ahead and eat first because we're hungry. Eat what? Your cooking that was in the kitchen. My cooking? I'll turn on the video so you can see what everyone thinks about your cooking. Wait, hang on. Hold this. Okay. Come on, everyone. Eat up. I'm excited for the food that you're so proud of. We skipped breakfast to make sure we had room for your cooking. Wow, thank you for the consideration. Oh, I'll critique. I mean, try it first. What is this? I could never let my relatives eat this kind of food. What? I don't believe it. She threw all the food off the table. Hillary, are you listening? Yes? Don't cook disgusting food when a bunch of relatives are over. This is why you can't trust single-parent households. The worst. I could never let you eat this kind of food. What is this fancy display of food? We don't need fancy! You think you're some kind of chef? N no This is trash! Worse than sewage! You can't eat food from a single-parent household! I'm so sorry, everyone! She's just the worst! Don't worry, I've made food just in case! Was she trying to embarrass me in front of the relatives? I'm sure that's what this is, right? Anyway... I'm not buying things right now. Huh? You said that you wanted me to cook all that stuff. How would I have the ingredients? We're out in the country, so it's not like there would be a 24-hour supermarket. Then what is this food? Who made it? I did. I'm sorry for making me food that tasted like sewage. I guess I don't have enough training. Y you made this? Oh, uh, I mean, it's so good. You're such a great chef. My mother-in-law was eating the food on the ground like a dog. It's so good on the ground, too! You can't eat food from a single-parent household, right? It's fine, you don't have to eat it. You had both parents. Nope, my mom just got remarried later. You didn't know because you were still young. Oh, uh, no. Th this is different. There are good people that have a single parent. Hillary is just busted. I think you're busted, Mom. Hey, yeah! Huh? Alan? Andrew? Huh? Why are Alan and Andrew here? He said he was too busy. I heard that you two were being pretty mean to Hillary, huh? N no way! Y yeah, that's just her complaining. W we're usually kind. How could you do this and still say you're kind? Can't pretend you don't know what we're talking about. We have proof. Huh? Proof? Yeah. The relatives are here, so what better time to show you? Yeah, that sounds great! Alan pulled out his phone and played a video. There was a video of them bullying me. Why? Why does this exist? Who recorded this? Who did this? This is terrible. How could you say this to Hillary? I don't believe it. This is actually the worst thing I've seen. No, I just wanted to teach her. Y yeah, it's tough love. People who come from a single parent household are often pretty bad at everything, so we wanted to help her out. We're done with you. Yeah. D done? Me too. Wait, hang on. I'm done too, mom. I'm going to live overseas with Hillary. 
right, hang on. Me too, of course. Huh? I'm going to live with Susan. What? Are you saying we're getting a divorce? Yep, that's exactly what I mean. From what I've been told, you just basically let Hillary take care of Susan entirely. H who said that? Huh? Susan did. S Susan? I play with you so often. You were never at home. You always smell like alcohol and came home late at night. You weren't at home on the weekend either. S Susan! It's the truth. Ugh. So yeah. Bye! Goodbye, guys. Wait, hang on. What are we supposed to do from now on? We were able to survive because you paid us. I don't get much social security. We're just gonna rot and die. Not my problem. Should have thought of that before you did that to my wife. Let's go! Yeah. Let's go pick up Hillary and Susan and go grab sushi or something. <laughs> That's a good plan! Wait, hang on! Don't abandon us! What happened to them afterwards? Well, all their relatives rejected them, and Alan and Andrew also completely cut ties with them. Andrew got a divorce and took custody of Susan. What, what do we do? I've only got three dollars in my name. What? Why is there so little? You just got paid back for the funeral, right? Because you don't go work, and you go out drinking. And I paid Hillary for damages. I can't take out any more loans. What? We had loans too. What do we do? Uh, I don't know. Work. I'm going to work too. I, I thought if I worked, I lost, but I guess I don't have a choice. The two tried to find a job, but they had never worked before, so no one hired them. They were terrible at their part-time job so that they got fired, too. They apparently eat weeds off the streets to stay alive now. We lived in the countryside, too, so word spread quickly. Everyone is pretty mean to them. And for me? Thank you, Susan. For what? I heard from Alan and Andrew. You recorded them, right? Yeah, Alan told me to. He said that he wanted me to record your daily life because he was worried you were sick. I just sent that to Daddy, too. I see. Thank you, too. Sorry it took me so long. I'm sorry for my mom and sister. My ex-wife was a bitch. Sorry. It's okay. I was so happy you two showed up. Thank you two so much. You're welcome! This isn't enough for a thank you, but I'm gonna keep my chips to five bags a minimum. Just like you said, Alan. I'm so glad you finally understand, Hillary. I'm so happy! You finally heard me out! Huh? Are you sure about that? Your wife is kinda nuts, huh? Wait, five bags?! You almost had me! That's more than before! C crap I found out! You're such a detective. It's not rocket science. You wouldn't have known if I didn't say anything. Oh, I mean, uh... I'm gonna keep to five bags of these candies a day, Daddy. Let's eat a lot of snacks together. Don't copy her! <laughs> Afterwards, I moved overseas with Alan. He's working overseas. Susan is living life happily with her dad. She seems happier now. All is well. A lot happened, but I'm glad it all worked out. We need to get to the apartments up ahead because there's reports of a fire. Please move. What? This has nothing to do with me. You don't need a fire truck for a small fire. Enough! Stop fooling around. Oh no, it's an explosion. We need to hurry, or it's going to spread! Damn it, what a blaze! I'm off, 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 off today! I can sit around all day and do nothing! What? What are you here, Hillary? Morning! Your key was open! As a firefighter who protects citizens, you should be more aware of your dangers, Mr. Allen. What? What are you doing here? Hang on! 
I don't even know where to start! You can start wherever you want. There are way too many places I want to start! Stop pretending you don't understand! Why are you here? I'm off today too, so I figured I'd hang out with a nice little co-worker who's also off. No! Go home! Stop spilling your chips! Don't worry about the little things. Come on, man! Stop trying to touch my books with your greasy hands! I'm starving, Alan! I only brought chips! You're seriously way too free! Huh? Who is that? Is it your girlfriend? This would be pretty messed up to explain if it was a girlfriend, huh? Coming! Good morning, Alan. You have a second? Good morning. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, your neighbor, huh? Good morning. You're over, huh? Perfect timing. Here, have this for lunch. I cooked a little too much this morning. I'll have some. Thank you so much. Thank you for always bringing food. It's seriously a tremendous help. No, no, thank you. We're able to live happily because you guys protect the neighborhood. Thank you, guys. I'm Alan. I'm a firefighter that works in the area. This girl who would be pretty if she just kept her mouth shut, but she's actually a firefighter, too. She's really good, too. We all work hard together, keeping the neighborhood safe. We have reports of smoke coming around Block 4. Let's go! Sir! There's some old buildings that way. The fire spreads. It could be tough. True. Let's rush. What is that group? Why are there so many cars parked in this road? We need to get through! Please, move your vehicles! What? We need to get through! Please move! Why do we have to move? You think you're so important, huh? What? Just go around! We already parked here! What are you talking about, idiot? This is a public road! You can't just park there! Move! Wow, scary! You can't say that to civilians! We don't hurry! People can end up dead! Please move! Then you need to pass money! $100 per vehicle! What? People might die, right? Then $100 is cheap money! Fine, whatever. Let's go through them. Calm down, Hillary. I'll buy you chips later. Urgh. Never gonna give you up! Never gonna let you down! Never getting through without a hundred dollars. We just need to go around. Hillary, let's go. What? I thought you needed to hurry. Come on, you think money is more important than people? What the hell is wrong with those idiots? I want to destroy them. I get it, but we need to get to the scene right now. We ran around to get to the site. Luckily, it was just a small fire, so it was all right. But if this was a real fire, then it very well could have been a serious problem. I'm so glad it ended up well. This isn't your house. We have overcome numerous difficult situations. We're basically family. So your house is technically my house. Yeah, no, technically it's not. Stop coming here like it's your house. Your house is cleaner to the station, and it's nicer. You also get free food. Hey, wait! Good morning, Alan. Hey! You guys get along so well. Here, you two enjoy this. Thank you! Thank you for always cooking for us. Don't mention it. Can I talk to you about something, Mr. Alan? Is there a problem? Yeah. Apparently, there are a bunch of delinquents in the area that are parking without permission. There are a lot of fires since it's winter time. She's worried because emergency vehicles wouldn't be able to get through. I see. They're not exactly the most friendly people, so it's a little scary to warn them. I've talked to the police, but it's not like the police can just constantly stick around to watch them. Before you know it, they're all around again. It's definitely those same people. This is definitely a trouble buster situation. Yeah, the roads are pretty narrow around here. Pretty tough for emergency vehicles to get through. We need to do something, let's go! Wait, hang on, hold your horses! Ah, she's so rowdy! When we went to the place that the delinquents supposedly hang out with Hillary, it was just as we expected. 
is the same people from before. I'm gonna show them what's what. Calm down, Hillary. If you do something and cause problems, that's exactly what they want. Come on, let me handle it, need some chips. Roger that. Num num num, you got this. Um, do you have a second? What are you guys doing here? Why do we have to tell you that? Can you not park here illegally or just hang out here? Bad traffic, and we might not be able to get through like before. It could kill someone. What? It's not like there are many fires every day. You're trying to take our spot of relaxation because of something that might happen? How rude. Yeah, we don't know when it'll happen. That's why we need to be prepared. That's to protect you and everyone in the area. You're so cool. What is that? <laughs> what a firefighter, huh? Woo! <laughs> to protect the safety? <laughs> You're seriously drunk on your own sense of justice, huh? For people? Seriously weird, man. Everyone's just in it for themselves! Ugh. I'm done. No more patience. You wanna hit me? Go ahead! You're not protecting me. You're so fired if you hit me. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, I'm not gonna listen to anything you have to say. This is our area. If you want us to move, you better come begging! You should be able to throw away your pride for your valuable citizens, right? Ugh. Begging towards these idiots. I know it's wrong, but... If I just swallow my pride and everything gets better, then I need to do it. Please, open the road! P please <laughs> I would never want to do this job! <laughs> You gotta beg for some random delinquents? Tough being a fighter fighter, huh? <laughs> they left about 30 minutes later, but it wasn't that they felt bad. They just had something to do. Which meant they still kept parking there every day. When the police show up, they disappear. But a little later, they just show up again. Unless something happens, we can only warn them just escalated their behavior every day. They're here again! Do they live there? They just keep coming back! How about we scatter some nails on the road then? Yeah, we're gonna run right over that too. Right. We were struggling every day dealing with them. While we were at the station, we got a report that there was a fire at the apartment I lived in. We've got a fire in the apartment in block two! We need to go! That's your apartment, right? Let's go! What are we gonna do if they're there again? They're usually not there yet. Well, what the hell? Woo, Andrew is coming through. Get out of the way, nerds! Where did they come from? Ignoring traffic signals, reckless driving. This is bad. Oh my gosh, they're the worst. Can we ram them? No! Don't lose those stupid fire trucks! Let's go! Are they going to try to get in front to block the road? No, they're insane! This is going too far! Alright, we got here first! You guys are too slow! Woo! We're not here to mess with you guys now! We have a report of a fire! Please, move! What? That has nothing to do with me! Honestly, if you're in such a rush, just go around! We were here first! If we could, we would have. There are no other roads that we could go through. There are many people that need our help now too. You're exaggerating. There's like a little smoke and no fire anyway. Just cause you only see smoke from here doesn't mean you know that the fire is small. We need to hurry. You don't need a fire truck for that. You should just carry buckets of water. Enough! Why are you guys intent on getting in the way? It's because you were being so high and mighty telling us to move. What? When did I order you around? If you've got a problem with me, take it with me. Stop dragging others into it. Oh no, an explosion. Oh shit, we need to hurry or it's gonna spread. Damn it, the fire! What? Seriously? No way, an explosion? Mr. Allen. Ah, oh, I'm glad to see you're all right. No, I still need help. My daughter is still inside. 
What? There are still people inside? No way! Please save her. Please, I'm begging you to save my daughter. I think this is getting out of hand. I don't know. You're the one that said block the road. We just listened to you. What? It's my fault. They were just hanging around here as usual. The person who started the fire is responsible for all of this. It's not my fault. I don't care. Just move. If someone is hurt, you're all in deep trouble. We should run. This is too far. Let's go. Wait, hang on. If you guys leave our cars, I can't move my car. Even if you try to get in the car and leave, we have way too many emergency vehicles backed up, so you have to go towards the apartment. But if you go in front of the apartment like this, you're not going to appreciate what you run into. What am I supposed to do with my baby? Yeah, it's really in the way. Go get everyone! We're going through! Trouble Buster! Don't you underestimate a firefighter's buses! For getting your cars out of the way. Easy peasy. On it. Hey ya. Don't touch my car. Ah! You're gonna scratch it. Your fault, idiot. Please, no. It was so expensive. I don't give a shit. All right, the fire trucks can go through now. Let's go. The fire trucks were finally able to make it to the apartment, and we rushed to extinguish the fire. A few hours later, the fire was extinguished. It was a miracle no one was seriously injured. You're alive! Mom, I was so scared! <laughs> I'm so glad she was okay. Luckily, the neighbor's daughter was rescued by a neighbor, and we were able to get to her. She was unharmed. I really thought we were screwed when we saw that explosion. I'm so glad everyone is alive, though. But... My second house is burned. Oh, yeah. I forgot that my house is burned. Don't worry. Look at your room. It's only, like, medium to well done. Stop pretending my room is a steak. It means it's pretty burned, too. It's all because those idiots blocked the road and we couldn't start fighting the fire. Oh, yeah. Where did that moron go? That delinquent is gone. I'm sure he was afraid because the whole thing was bigger than he thought. I'm not going to forgive them. Yeah, get mad. Oh no. I didn't expect it to be that big a deal. Am I gonna get arrested? I don't think there was anyone dead, but if they're injured, it's my fault, right? Shit. Oh god, they're here! What do I do? Hey, you did something, didn't you? There are cops here. Come out! I've got nothing to do with this anymore. I don't know what you did, but you handle it. Mommy, stop! Get out! You're Mr. Andrew. I'm with the police. I'm here to talk to you about the fire from the other day. Do you have a second? Yes. I'm Alan from the fire brigade. I'm Hillary. Uh, uh, how can I help you? What? Don't act like you don't know. Putting it bluntly, we would like to formally charge you and have the police take custody of you for impeding an emergency vehicle. What? Impeding? What is that? Is that a crime? Yes. You'll be arrested and sentenced to a minimum of one year. A maximum of ten years in state penitentiary. What? Why? It wasn't my fault the fire started. The person who's responsible is the person who started the fire. But because you're in the way, we couldn't start fighting the fire. The place would have been burning even if I wasn't in the way. It's not that big a deal. We would be there in about seven minutes normally. But because you guys were in the way, we were over 20 minutes late. If we'd started fighting the fire sooner, it would have ended with a small fire according to the local residents. Investigation of the scene shows that it was very much the case. I don't care about that! It's your fault for always pestering us! So I just couldn't back down! I don't care about your stupid pride! You are going to kill someone over that! You only care about protecting your stupid shitty ego! What?! If you want to go that far, you should have just got people to move the car to begin with! It was your fault for taking so long! It's not just my fault! How could you say that? Honestly, you guys moved my car without a care of the world, so my car is scratched! You're gonna pay for it, right? 
Sorry, but we had to move your car for the emergency vehicle. We will not be paying you. What? Then what about my car? It's all damaged and dented. You're saying I need to fix it on my own? You must be out of your mind. Karma, bitch. How dare you? Enough. If you have any more complaints, I'll take them down to the station. Wait, hang on! I'm not going to the police station! Don't be stupid. Don't resist. I'm very busy. Ah! Oh yeah, I have someone I want to introduce you to. Melanie. She just got here. Ta-da! She's a lawyer! <laughs> Sorry, I was a lawyer. What? Lawyer? The apartment residents, myself included, will be taking you to court. This lawyer will be talking to you, so make sure you answer her. What? What do you mean? Why am I being sued? I'm going to be the lawyer representing this case. <laughs> I'm Melanie. I'll be in touch. Oh, and about the fire. The fire trucks were unable to arrive due to causes unrelated to the fire brigade. As a result, the fire spread further than necessary, and the residents have lost quite a bit of money. Additionally, they were in fear for their life. Wait, hang on! That's not fair! <laughs> this is a perfect case for me, Mr. Andrew. I'm gonna really come for your money. Wait, are you saying it's all my fault? Don't worry. We're gonna be sending the bill and a nice little visit from the police as well. Must be nice not being lonely, huh? Damn it! Andrew and his friends were arrested and sentenced to five years without the chance of parole. If you get in the way of a fire truck, you may end up costing someone their life. But they impeded our progress and caused the fire to spread. Additionally, some people were injured. Oh, hey, that fire's on the news. Their full names are being shown. Andrew's a popular guy. Yeah, there aren't many people who get in the way of fire trucks. In other words, it's so stupid that most people don't do that. Why are you spilling chips on my new house? Come on, I helped you move. Don't be so upset. If anything, you should be giving me a year's worth of chips for helping you move. You're gonna get fat if you eat so many chips. Ugh, you can buy my chips, come on. You've got quite a bit of money from the court case and insurance, right? No, I need to use it for the move and replacing lost furniture. Why are you so diligent? What's wrong with being diligent, you potato chip monster? Coming! Wait, hang on, you don't live here! Hey, Miss Neighbor. Oh, hi, Miss Hillary and Mr. Allen, too. Oh, hi! I just recently moved here. What a coincidence. I just moved here yesterday, too. So I came by to say hey, but wow! Neighbors again, huh? Thank you for the fire incident. Oh, I'm just glad everyone was okay. Hey! Are you going to be taking this opportunity to live with Hillary? What? No, we're not. No, we're not dating either. What? Really? I didn't know that. I mean, yeah, we're not dating, but I didn't expect you to just shut it down like that. Don't worry, Alan. He's my work partner, but he's definitely not some kind of romantic partner. I don't know. I just can't fall for him, you know? Ugh, this sucks. What a great co-worker. She puts out the fire of my romance. The flame in my heart is not going to be put out, though. Not that it seems like you even become rich anyway. How dare you? You can't just say things like that. As if you could ever be the one to tell me how to act. My name's Aaron. My parents run their own company, and luckily I've never had to worry about money growing up. I was always able to buy whatever I wanted, and everything I owned was of the highest quality. I knew that I was quite well off, but I made sure to be grateful for the life I had. And I always knew that I wanted to give back to my family when I got older. Dad, I'll give you a massage! After all, you must be tired from working all day. Why, oh, thank you, Aaron. I can't believe how selfless you can be. The least I can do right now for you, Dad. Mom told me, you're an important pillar of our family. Do you want to grow up to be like me, Aaron? Of course, Dad. I want to make a lot of money like you and make our family happy. 
If that's the case, you'll need to study hard, go to a good school, and then you'll be on your way to becoming a successful adult. Okay, Dad, then I'll do my best to study hard. That's my boy. Ever since I was little, my parents had told me how important it was to study hard, and also how to make money later in life. Obviously, they knew what they were talking about because they owned their own successful business. And although I did my best to follow in their footsteps, after I started school and they saw my grades, their attitude towards me changed. Aaron, about tonight's Christmas dinner, you'll be staying home, got it? What? Why do I have to stay home? You just have to. No, but I really wanted to go. I want to go to the nice restaurant tonight with everyone. How dare you want such luxuries when you can't even study properly. Your grades are horrible. For math and PE, you average the second lowest grade possible. As if anyone with grades as such should get the chance to eat at a fancy dinner. You better start taking yourself seriously. But I still tried my hardest. And in my class, I'm the most... I'll be hearing no more of your nonsense excuses. Is that all you're good for? It's time you really started being more like your older brother. He's a star. He's at the top of his class. And he's even the captain of a sports team at school. He's the perfect example of how our children ought to be. <laughs> so that's why you'll be staying home tonight. There will be no Christmas dinner for you, or presents for that matter. Think long and hard about your life decisions. Dad... Please! Think before calling me dad again. I'm not the father of any loser children. Ever since I started elementary school, my parents expected me to always ace my tests at school. And I tried my best, but it was hard for me to keep up with everyone else at this elite school, considering that I was never really good at studying. And like me, my older brother Abe was perfect at everything. He was good at sports and studying. Because of this, my parents would always compare the two of us. I was always seen as a loser that couldn't do anything right. So, as a punishment, my parents would regularly not allow me to enjoy festive events. It was really hard on a kid like me. Like this, 10 years went by and I became a high school student. I heard from Dad that you got into the top 4 in your class for the end of semester tests. Yeah, that's so lame. If you were 4th, you might as well have been last. Nothing matters if you can't be number 1. I'm constantly surprised by just how much of a loser you are. My studies have nothing to do with you! I'm trying my best! I did my best to get into the best high school, and I was able to do so! What was your ranking for the entrance exam? What? You know I was number one for my year, right? How about you? I didn't know we were ranked in our entrance exam results. That's because you're lame. You obviously weren't number one, or else you would have known it. You really should just leave this family. You don't belong here. Why do you hate me so much? I know I'm not some genius like you, but I'm still doing my best. Even mom and dad won't acknowledge how hard I'm trying. Jeez, stop whining. Ever since I was little, I wasn't allowed to take part in festive events. Have you ever thought about how it made me feel? I was just a little kid that wasn't even given presents on his birthday. That just means you have to try harder. If you can't make it to the top, then you clearly don't deserve such luxuries. That's why everyone's been so strict on you. Not that it seems like you even become rich anyway. How dare you! You can't just say things like that! As if you could ever be the one to tell me how to act. Come outside. What? Just come. Fine. Look at the bottom of the stairs. Why? <laughs> huh! Uh, Abe pushed me down the emergency staircase. That's what you deserve for being so lame. Now, you better understand to never argue with me ever again. Uh, it hurts. Help me. My leg. <laughs> what? Is your leg broken or something? I'm begging you. Please call the police. Fine. Oh, but oops. It seems as though my phone's not working. I guess I forgot to charge it. Well, I guess I won't be able to call for help then. Too bad. Ugh, it really hurts. Stop being such a baby. You're overreacting like some gang member trying to look like the victim. I guess that's all you're capable of doing, just acting all weak and helpless. 
it really hurts. Just stay here for another hour. If no one's come to help you by then, then I'll consider calling you an ambulance. Until then, just wait patiently. Don't you dare scream for help or anything. That would create such a nuisance for everyone living in this condo. So just quietly whimper if you have to. Well, I mean, even if you screamed, no one would probably hear you. But still, don't you dare. With that, Abe left to me. He had no remorse for having pushed me down the stairs. I was hurt badly, but I knew I couldn't let him get away with this. So I crawled outside, got in a taxi, and made my way to the hospital. Abe needs to be taught a lesson. That's why I decided to text my parents about what he had done to me. Please, Dad, believe me! What are you going on about? Everything you said sounds like a complete lie. How dare you come up with a stupid lie to try and frame your brother like that? What you just told me is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I don't have time to be dealing with you right now. And you should be spending your time studying, not spinning stupid lies. At least studying will be a better use of your time. But Dad, I'm telling you the truth! He really hurt me on purpose! No, you slipped and fell and hurt your leg by yourself. Stop trying to pin everything on Abe. Get a grip already! What? You need to stop being so jealous of your perfect brother. Take responsibility for what you've done. How idiotic can you be? Dad... I couldn't believe all the things my own dad was saying to me, but I felt like there was no way for me to get through to him. In the end, everyone chose to believe that I slipped and hurt my leg by myself. Because Abe pushed me down a flight of stairs where there weren't any surveillance cameras, there was nothing else that I could do. After having gone to the hospital, I was told to not move around so much, but I was made to do house chores for my family, so my leg couldn't heal properly. It took a whole year for my leg to get back to normal, even though originally it was only supposed to take three months to heal. By that time, I was just about to graduate high school, and after graduating, I decided to leave home as well. I'll be graduating high school today, so I'll pack up my things and leave home as well. What are you going on about? As if you're just allowed to do that without asking for our permission. I'm an adult now, so I have the freedom to do whatever I want, and I choose to not acknowledge you as my family anymore. You should all be fine with that. After all, you've told me over and over again about how consistently disappointed you are in me. No, you're going to stay right here and start working for my company. That's always been the plan, you know that. I know you were always planning on hiring me, but to never pay me, so you could use me like some kind of slave for your company. After knowing all of this, how am I supposed to just stay here? I refuse to. This is my life, not yours. Let me live my own life, or else I'll have to take legal action. I have the right to my own freedom. I've done my best to make you happy until now by studying hard, but it's gone on for way too long. I need to do what's right for me now. Stop arguing with me, boy. I've heard enough. Just leave already then. Don't ever come back here ever again. I didn't even need you to tell me that. I have no plans of ever coming back. With that then, I bid you farewell, Dad. With that, I left my house straight away. My dad said he never wanted to see me again. But I also had no plans on seeing any of them ever again. So I was okay with that. Especially after having found out that he had planned to hire me to work for his company and do his dirty work for him after graduating high school. Since leaving my family home that night, I've never been back, and I also ended up getting married. I was happily living together with my wife, when one day, I got a call from my strange dad. Is that you, Aaron? Who is this? As if you could ever forget your own father's voice. Anyway, what are you doing now? It has nothing to do with you. I don't have time for this, Aaron. Abe collapsed! We took him to the hospital to get checked, and it turns out that he has a problem with his pancreas. We need to find him a donor ASAP! That's why you need to get to the hospital now. We're at the big hospital near our house. You know the place, right? I don't see how any of this has anything to do with me. After all, you're the one that said you never wanted to see my face ever again. You're Abe's brother. There's a high chance that your pancreas could save him. Please, just hurry up and get here. Fine. Even though I still didn't feel 100% great about helping my brother, I knew we were family and that I should at least go visit him. On my way to the hospital, I did some research about my brother's condition, and I even asked the doctors at the hospital about how critical my brother's situation was. 
I knew that I had all the knowledge I needed to make my dad swallow his words. He has no idea what's coming for him. Trouble busters! Aaron, you're here! You're going to become my donor, right? What are you talking about? Didn't the doctor inform you about the state of Abe's pancreas? Yeah, but I won't be acting as anyone's donor. What? Hey, wait! You're joking, right? No, with this decision of mine, I hope I can see you quickly off to heaven. If you need help with Abe's funeral, just let me know. I have connections. I'm sure I'll be able to get my hands on a cheap coffin. How dare you say that about your own brother? Exactly. How inconsiderate can you be? You evil person. There already isn't much you can do. So the least you could do is help save Abe's life. Stop messing around and help already. No, you stop messing around. What? Abe doesn't even need a donor. Don't you remember paying off the doctor to not tell me that he doesn't actually need a donor? Uh, it would be best if he found a donor. But he can also get away with simply just getting rid of part of his pancreas. But the latter would be more expensive. And there's always the possible risk of Abe getting sick again. You knew that finding a donor would be cheaper and there'd be less risks for Abe. That's why you came to me, asking if I'd become his donor. That's enough, Aaron. I researched about Abe's condition, so I know what I'm talking about. I even got a good friend of mine who's a doctor that confirmed what I found out. Why is it that you're so concerned about money now, though? Whatever happened to your company? How dare you change the topic? We're talking about Abe here. Maybe if you grovel, I might think about becoming Abe's donor. You? After that, my dad finally revealed that his company was going under. And because of that, he didn't have enough money for Abe's surgery to just cut a part of his pancreas. He needed to find a donor, because that would have been cheaper. My dad ended up groveling, and that's when I knew I had to throw my final blow. Please, I'm begging you, Aaron. Fine. Seriously? Then let's get you checked to see if you're a match for me. I'm not going to become a donor, but I'll help pay for his surgeries if you pay me a monthly interest of 10%. Simple. What? Hey! You need money either way, right? So I'll lend it to you. After all, you can't take out a loan from the bank, right? And it's not like you'll go to a loan shark either. I mean, you can if you want, but they'll surely ask for more than 10%. You don't have to make up your mind up now. Get back to me when you've made your decision. I'll be off then. This isn't a joke, Aaron! Your brother is in a critical condition! How dare you leave him like this! Exactly! How dare dare you? You're supposed to save me. That's what brothers are for. Then what do you have to say for yourself when you push me down the stairs? If I fell head first, I wouldn't be here right now. Think about that. With that, I left the hospital. Soon after, my dad called me again, and he accepted the offer I had made to him earlier. Even after Abe's surgery, however, he never fully recovered and had to have multiple follow-up surgeries. And even though it seemed as though Abe will be bedridden forever, I made sure to go through a lawyer about the offer I had made to my dad, so I was protected no matter what happened. With everything going on with Abe and his own company, it seemed as though my dad was under a lot of stress. My mom also had to work overtime for Abe, and even Abe himself had to work from the hospital bed. This just goes to show that karma really does come around. I did feel a little bad for everyone, but then I thought back to all that they had put me through. I hope they take a little something away from this experience, and that they grow to become better people. Troublebusters!